Hi guys, Ivan here. In this little tutorial, I want to introduce the man in the middle SSH exercise in Hacking Lab. So there is a GitHub repository for the exercise and uh, it's a, a Docker Compose file. And then if you boot up the Docker, Docker file, you will have two um, Docker images running. One is the so-called SSH man in the middle proxy, uh, listening on localhost port 10022. And there is the origin uh, SSH server on listening on port 2020. So let me check. As you can see here, we have the SSH man in the middle proxy. You can build it locally and it will forward SSH uh, messages to the open SSH server where the open SSH Docker service is listening on port 22. And this way you can connect throughout the proxy on port 100,022 and directly on port 22. Okay, one of the steps here uh, below, the step five, is to create a key pair and deploy the client uh, public key from your local live CD into the Docker, into the open SSH Docker. You can do this manually uh, by running Docker PS. So let me start the Docker, Docker compose up. I leave it open without the detached flag to see um, the current status. Um, okay, now I get the, it will build up the Docker SSH man in the middle and afterward it will boot up the open SSH server and here we go. So let me open a new tab, Docker PS. As you can see, we have two Docker images, the man in the middle listening on port 10022 and the uh, origin server listening on port 22. So if I have created an SSH key using SSH keygen, it will create a key file in this directory. Uh, I already did this step, so I don't want to overwrite my current key. So I press Ctrl C. And somehow you need to copy the SSH public key, this file, onto, um, into the open SSH server. So you can actually uh, use copy this in, into your clipboard and to uh, run a command within the Docker uh, itself and do it uh, by using nano or vi. So docker ps. So we have, I want to enter these docker servers. So docker exec minus e interactive and which one? The 7, uh, 7f9 and I want to have a bash. Okay, now I am currently within the Alpine Docker service uh, on, that has a listener on port 22. And second, I can now uh, create a, a directory in the home hacker SSH directory, change the permission, create the authorized keys file, change the permission as well, and change everything to uh, hacker hacker because when I'm logged in interactively, I have a root, a root shell and then copy paste the SSH public key that I just copied into this file. So do, you can actually deploy the SSH public key manually by copy pasting, or you can use instead the SSH ID copy command. I will use that one because it's easier and simpler. So I'll copy this one and uh, go back, going back to the shell out of my, ba out of my Docker and copy paste uh, this command. So it will actually, there's a wrapper script that will do all these steps for you. So SSH copy ID, uh, which public key do you want to deploy uh, and to what host. So uh, this will actually copy the, or create the authorized key files and set the permissions correctly. Of course, you can only use this methodology if you have access to the server. In this case, it's username password based and uh, as you can see in the docker compose file a username password is being give given by these environment variables so hacker is the username compass is the password 
So let me run the script. Um, okay, I need. I already deployed it, so uh, I will remove the, remove, uh, the key. So running this command. Okay, do it again. Um, sorry, this one SSH copy ID. Uh, now um, I'll copy it to the destination server. Do I accept the fingerprint? Yes. I need to enter the password. Um, password is uh, username is hacker. The password is compass. And now the key has been added. Now, from now on, you can SSH into your uh, Docker service using public-private key authentication. So SSH, uh, let me uh, refer to the username. I want to log in as user hacker to uh, localhost. Um, host. I don't need to add the port. If it's on the default port 22, it's not required. But um, so this way. As you can see, without entering a password, I have now been able to log into the SSH server. Okay, that was uh, the key deployment. And uh, so the rest of the exercise here in the steps two and three and four, you will uh, connect via the SSH man in the middle and uh, it will work as long as username password authentication is turned on, uh, even if uh, public private key authentication is turned on it will still work as long as the client is not enforcing public private key authentication or the server is not enforcing public private key uh, uh, authentication and so in this exercise you will then uh, set up a, a client policy to uh, only connect if public private key authentication has been turned on okay that's for the moment thank you for watching take care bye bye